welcome to part two of our deodorant product visualization. In this part, we'll be diving into the texturing process to bring our deodorant model to life. If you missed part one, you can find the link in the description below or just click on the link on the screen to catch up. Let's get started. All right, now it's time to dive into materials and textures for our deodorant model. Let's start by switching over to the shader editor. I'll also re-enable the screencast keys so you can follow along with every shortcut I use. Press N to hide the side panel here for a bit more workspace. And let's also switch our viewport shading to rendered view so we can see how the textures and lighting look in real time. Now, if you notice, our scene looks a little too dark right now. So let's add some lighting to brighten things up. In the shader editor, change the setting from object to world to access our environment lighting settings. We're going to add an HDI to bring in some natural lighting. To do that, select the background node and hit Ctrl T to automatically add an environment texture node. If that shortcut isn't working for you, go to Edit, Preferences, then search for Node Wrangler in the Add-ons tab and make sure it's enabled. This add-on makes working with nodes a lot easier. Once that's set up, click Open to locate your HDRI. We'll keep it simple and use the default Blender HDRI for this tutorial so that you don't have to worry about downloading or buying any new HDRIs. I'll go with a city HDRI here for some urban reflections. After loading it in, let's tone down the strength a bit since it's a bit intense. Set the strength to around 0.1 or 0.2, just like this. Now switch back from world to object in the shader editor so we can start adding materials to our model. Let's start with the first sphere we created as part of our bubble effect. Select it, add a new material, and choose a nice light blue color to give it a cool, fresh look. Then, reduce the roughness to around 0.1 to make it look a bit glossy and reflective, which will help catch the light nicely. Let's move on to some final adjustments to our render settings and materials. First, let's switch our rendering engine from Eevee to Cycles to achieve higher quality visuals and better lighting effects. If you have a dedicated graphics card, go ahead and change the rendering device from CPU to GPU. This will help speed up the rendering process. Now let's fine tune the materials for the spheres. Select our first sphere, then go to its base color and reduce the saturation a bit to give it a slightly muted look like this. Nice. Now to save time, we'll apply this material to multiple objects. So select the second sphere, hold shift, and click the first sphere we just modified to keep it selected as well. Press Ctrl L and select Link Materials. This will instantly apply the same material to both spheres. For the next sphere, let's try something a bit different. Select it, create a new material, and set the base color to a cool blue. Set the roughness to 0.2 to make it more reflective, and increase the transmission to 1 for a nice, glassy, transparent effect. Now, to copy this look to more spheres, select all the remaining spheres, holding Shift as you click each one, and select the sphere we just textured last. Hit Ctrl L and link the materials so all of these spheres share the same transparent blue texture. With that done, let's move on to our background. Select the background plane, add a new material, and set its base color to a light blue shade. Now, you might notice that the HDRI is visible through the bubble spheres. To fix this, we just need to scale up our background plane so it covers everything. With the background plane selected, scale it up until it fully covers the scene, like this. Now for the finishing touches, we want to brighten things up. Go back to the world properties and increase the HDRI strength to about 0.5. This will add just the right amount of light and detail to help us see everything a bit clearer in the scene. All right, now let's start adding some color and texture to our deodorant model. First, select the main deodorant container and click New in the Materials tab to create a new material. For the base color, choose a nice shade of blue. Now, to quickly use this exact same color on the lid, hover your mouse over the base color and press Ctrl C to copy it. Next, select the cover Hit the plus icon to add a new material, then hover over the base color again and press Ctrl V to paste in that same blue color. 
This way, both pieces match perfectly. To adjust the surface feel, let's reduce the roughness to 0.3 for both the cover and the container. This will give them a bit of shine without being too reflective, adding to that sleek finished look. Now let's give the actual deodorant stick a new material as well. Select it, click New, and set the base color to a clean white. Reduce the roughness to 0.05 to make it almost glossy. This will give it that polished effect, making it look fresh and new. Now let's add a label to the container. With the deodorant container selected, go to the shader editor. Here, select the principled BSDF node and hit Shift D to duplicate it. Move the duplicated principled BSDF node up so you have some space to work with. Then move the material output node up a bit as well. To combine these two principled BSDF shaders, we'll need a mix shader node. Press Shift A, go to shader and add a mix shader node. Connect the mix shader to the surface input of the material output and plug each of the principled BSDF shaders into the shader inputs on the mix shader, just like this. Finally, let's set the base color of the duplicated principled BSDF to white so it stands out as a potential label area on the deodorant container. First, let's understand how our mix shader factor works. When it's set to 1, the deodorant shows up as blue, and when it's set to 0, it displays as white. To make the label appear, we'll control this factor using an image texture. Select the duplicated principled BSDF node and hit Ctrl T to add an image texture node. Locate and load your image texture from your files. If you're following along, I'll link the specific image texture I'm using in the description, but feel free to use any label image you have on hand. Now, when you add the label, you may notice it doesn't align correctly on the model, but don't worry, we can easily fix that. Let's switch over to the UV editor to adjust our UV map. First, select the deodorant, hit tab to enter edit mode, and make sure you're in face select mode. You can press three or use the mode options at the top. Hold shift and select all the faces on the container where the label should appear. Once you have your selection, press U and choose unwrap. This action flattens the faces into the UV map, ready for aligning. In the UV editor, press A to select all the unwrapped faces, then press R and type 90 to rotate them 90 degrees so they align with the label's orientation. Now press G to move the UV selection, aligning it to the main part of the label in the image texture. Use S to scale if needed to fit the label area perfectly. After that, select any additional faces for parts of the label, like the bottom section, and repeat the unwrapping steps. Select these faces, press U and choose Unwrap, then align them on the UV map to match the bottom of the label. Uh, to make sure only the label areas show the design, select all the label covered faces. Press Ctrl I to invert the selection, and in the Starred UV editor, press A to select everything. Scale down the inverted selection, moving it to a blank white section of the image texture. This ensures that non-label areas on the deodorant display as plain white, completing the look. Now that we're done with unwrapping, we can switch back to the shader editor. First, switch this tab back to object mode to leave edit mode on the deodorant. Next, in the shader editor, let's change the repeat option on our image texture to extend. This will make sure the label doesn't repeat itself on other parts of the container. Now unplug the image texture node and connect it to the factor input on the mix shader node. With this setup, we're only using the label where we want it, and you can see that the label looks clean and positioned correctly on the deodorant. The nice thing about this setup is that we can easily change the label color by adjusting the color of the duplicated principled BSDF shader. I'm going to change it to a darker blue, which contrasts nicely against the lighter color of the deodorant container. This helps the label stand out clearly. All right, with our label done, it's time to set up the lighting to bring everything together in our scene. Head back over to the 3D viewport and let's add some lights to give the deodorant model some depth. Press Shift A to bring up the Add menu, go to Light, and choose Area Light. 
With the light added, rotate it and align it behind the deodorant model to create a nice backlight effect. This will give the edges of our deodorant some definition. Now press S to scale the light and then Z to scale it only along the Z axis. This makes the light taller, matching the height of the deodorant. Next, head over to the Light Properties tab on the right panel and increase the strength to around 100 or even 200 to give us a bright, pronounced light. Under Spread, set the spread angle to 20. This narrows the light so it stays focused on our deodorant. Now let's scale the light a bit along its local y-axis to control its width. To do this, press S then Y twice to lock the scale to the local y-axis. This makes the light slimmer and keeps it tightly focused on the model. To add some fill lighting for the front of the deodorant, let's duplicate the light we just set up. With the area light still selected, press Shift D to duplicate it, then rotate it to face the front of the deodorant directly. This will provide a bit of highlight on the label itself, bringing out the detail in the front without overpowering the backlight. With the light still selected, let's change the spread back to 180i to ensure we have even distribution. Now let's move the light back a bit. Press G, then Z twice to move it along the local Z axis, away from the sphere. Next, let's move the sphere away from the light source so it has a little more space. Press G and drag it to the side and you should have something like this. Now select the duplicated light and press S, then Y twice to scale it along the local Y axis just like this. Now let's adjust the power of the light to around 500 or 400 if you want it a bit softer. Next, press Shift D to duplicate the light. Then press R to rotate it. Move it closer to the background plane to cast some light on top of it. Now we have a nice soft light hitting the background like this. Let's now add a point light. Press Shift A, go to Light and choose Point. Move it back a bit by pressing G then Y to move it along the Y axis behind your objects. With the point light selected, increase the radius to spread out the light a bit like this. Set the power to 200 to get a soft light. We can now see the light reflecting on the bubbles. If you don't want that, select the light and under the Light Properties tab, go to Max Bounces and uncheck Multiple Importance Sampling. This will stop the highlights from showing on the bubbles. Next, let's go to the World Properties tab and increase the strength of the HDRI. Set it to around 0.8 for a nice, balanced light. Before we render out the scene, let's adjust the camera. Select the Camera, and under the Camera Properties tab, make sure you enable Depth of Field. Then, use the Eyedropper tool next to the Focus Object field and select the deodorant. This ensures the camera will focus on it. Let's set the f-stop to 0.3 to get a shallow depth of field, which will help emphasize the deodorant and blur the background. Now, before rendering, go to the Render Properties tab, and under Color Management, change the look to high contrast for a sharper image. Also, set the render samples to 200 to ensure a clean image. Now you're ready to render out your image. That's it for part two of our deodorant product visualization. We've covered the texturing and materials to bring the model to life. If you missed part one, make sure to check the link in the description below or click on the link on the screen to catch up. Don't forget to subscribe for more tutorials like this, and thanks for watching. I'll see you in the next one.